And we now have the Cavaliers GM, the guy who has put this thing together, David Griffin, getting all mic'd up right now and about to join us. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome in. This is going to be fun. So, uh, I mean, day one, what are your expectations? So I, I think one of the great things about our team is that we've been together long enough now to know what to expect. We know what to expect of Ty Lue as well. Um, our coaching staff really has a chemistry and synergy now. Um, so I expect our best basketball is in front of us for sure. David, I look at it as for a GM for you. You know, obviously us players and obviously in broadcasting, we get a chance to have a couple days off. I think for you, just looking as a GM, it seems like even though the season is very intense, probably off the season is just as intense for you. Can you take us through, like, after the championship, the celebration? I would figure in 48 hours, you're back, right back working, trying to make this team better and being able to compete for another championship. Well, we were really blessed that we went as long into the season as we did, obviously, so it's a high-class problem. But we did get to the point where the, the season went as long as it could possibly go. The draft was as early as it could possibly be. There was a shorter free agent moratorium, so things stacked up on themselves a little bit for sure. How uh, much more can you tell us about the additions you're still looking to make to this roster? Well, I think in terms of additions, we feel really good about where we're at. You know, a lot of our growth is going to have to come from within. This isn't a situation where it's a bottomless wellspring of money. I mean, we've already spent spent as much money as you can in tax uh, in, in building the roster. So I, I feel really comfortable with the group we have. We're excited about Jordan McRae by way of example, what he may be able to do helping us in a combo guard type of situation. We've got some kids here in camp that are going to compete for jobs, which is a great environment to be in. As you know, the more competitive camp is, the more you're going to get out of it. So we're excited about what we have, but we're really hoping that the fact that we've all reached a level of comfort with each other means that all of our pieces are going to click a little bit better. David, when you, you assess this team, and I, I'm talking about not players, just say our area that you want to, I guess, um, get better in, uh, what area is that? Is it rebounding defensively? Is it athleticism? What area you look at this Cleveland Cavalier team and said in your mind that you want to improve? I, I think we were certainly a, a lesser version of ourselves defensively too many nights last year. Uh, as we started to play better in the playoffs, I think we paid a little bit more attention to detail in that way. Um, but we certainly weren't the team that we're capable of being on the defensive end. Um, you're seeing Shumpert now. He's a big part of the reason for that. Uh, Shump's in great shape. He's really dedicated himself to that. I think he was going through some issues from an injury standpoint last year when he first came back that made it so he wasn't quite as menacing on that end as he could be. And I think several guys last year, Kevin Love included, coming off the surgery that he was, weren't quite what he's capable of being either. So, again, as I said, we're expecting growth from within on both sides of the ball, but I'd like to see us really commit to the defensive end with more consistency. What did you add to this team with the acquisitions of Chris Birdman Anderson and uh, Mike Dunleavy as well? Mike Dunleavy was somebody that we were really excited about adding, and we would have liked to have added um, even in the previous season. Um, his size on the wing, his basketball IQ, his shooting ability, you know, from a metric standpoint, he shoots about as well as you can in the league when he's left open. And in, in our offense, an awful lot of the shots that our jump shooters get are wide open and uncontested. And so Mike being particularly efficient in that role and being smart enough to make the right next pass, we feel very comfortable about how the ball will move. His versatility as a team defender was important. And Bird is just a guy who brings intensity every day. And we really needed that. You know, the one thing we fear and we've learned from paying attention to the other great teams in our league that have won is complacency may be our biggest enemy. And, and Mike is extremely extremely hungry to win and Chris has such high energy every day that we're hoping we combat that a little bit. And I think David another question for me is you got a chance to look through summer league and you talk about Jordan McCray you talk about Kay Felder two guys that came out and really competed and let's start with Jordan McCray you look at him as the first thing you see is score but I like the way you guys played him in the summer, he had the basketball in his hand to maybe uh, run a little bit of backup point. Yeah, Jordan does a really nice job of making the right pass. Uh, he's certainly a score first type of player. He reminds me a little bit of Jamal Crawford in that way. Jamal can make the right play, but you may be better off asking him to go score. So we're going to see how that evolves and, and what it looks like for Jordan to have the ball more. But our coaches did a really, really good job of exposing 
him to the opportunity in the summer, and, and we hope we can build on it. Kay Felder is a kid that, again, that complacency I talked about, he's made of all the right stuff. You know, it's almost ironic that he's coming in to play point in a year when we lost Delhi because Delhi will run through a brick wall to beat you. Kay will as well. Um, unfortunately, at his size, he may lack some of the versatility that we had in Delhi, but we're really optimistic that Kay is going to be able to emerge and, and, and play a little bit of a role for us. And with Mo Williams announcing his retirement, do you see that backup point guard position as potentially a competition between those three guys that you've now mentioned? Yeah, we do think that, again, because Jordan has some versatility there, because Kay can do what he can do. We, we have some people in camp that we're excited about. DeAndre Liggins can guard point guards. He's an exceptional passer. He was really, really good with our summer league team. We see, as him, we see him as somebody who has some size and length and versatility to maybe make this club. Um, so we're, we're looking at a lot of different things to maybe be able to bridge that gap. And, and lastly, maybe the most important part is LeBron can play that position quite a bit as well. So the more versatile wings we have that can play off the ball and make shots, the better off we're going to be. And I think when you watch a team win a championship, and I give Ty Lue a lot of credit, Kristen and David, uh, that's tough coming in midseason, being able to take a team that already made it to a championship and gets them to the next level. Talk about what you're seeing now for him getting a chance to have a training camp of his own and his imprint will be on this team. Well, there was a moment yesterday when we watched the workout that we had, and you could see that our players, when they walk over to the bench during, during dead ball situations, there's, their, their body language is different. You know, there's no tension anymore in the system. And, and Ty is exactly the same. He's grown immensely, and he understands now exactly what he's capable of. I think last year in the playoffs, Larry Drew was probably playing an enormous role for him, just in helping him feel himself a little bit in the role. And now it just it's coming very naturally to Ty, and he's a special communicator. He's really, really a good tactician. And the things that those guys did in huddles in big moments were significant. Um, Steve, you know this as well as anybody. When, you're, when your coach comes to the huddle in a really big moment and everybody else is losing their mind and he's totally calm and under control, it makes a big impression. And he's been exactly the same so far in camp. He's, he's not a rah-rah guy. He's very matter-of-fact. You've brought up avoiding complacency a couple of times. I described media day as very relaxed, I think, as opposed to even the last couple of seasons, even after an NBA championship appearance last season, they appear to be very relaxed now. So how is it that you get out there from the get-go, from opening night, kind of shedding the emotions of what will be a ring ceremony, what will be a championship celebration, to get out there and avoid that complacency moving forward? Kristen, that's a great question. I wish I knew for sure. Um, I, I think I think what we've done because we're as veteran as we are is because we've found that comfort level, we understand we're not going to win anything in October. Um, we're going to have to build and get better every day, and the guys understand that. And our conference is radically improved. It's uh, going to be a very difficult game almost every night in our conference now, and that's something that I think our guys are aware of. So we won't get too high, we won't get too low, which is something Bron always preached as well. So I think our players are, are of that now. They know what the job really takes and what's really required. But I also think it's important that we have guys that are really hungry and amped up and, and remind them of what it looks like to have not won. So, David, you know, fans mean so much. But for this city, Cleveland Cavaliers, to win a championship, uh, it, it was just ecstatic and people were going crazy. Can you just talk about, still to this day, the vibe and the feel of the city of Cleveland after you guys brought a championship home? It's, it's a special feeling to get to be part of. You know, you feel like your legacy will, no matter what happens the rest of your career, you'll have those moments and knowing what, what the team has helped do for the city. Um, what ownership did and in investing at the level they did to bring this about. You know, the images of the parade, anytime I see them now, still give me chills. You think about the vibe that's here now. This has become a, well, of course we're going to win city instead of a city that thinks about all the reasons they won't win. They're really in invested in the Cleveland Indians playoff run right now. And rather than thinking the other shoe has to fall, this is a city now that expects greatness of itself, and that's that's really meaningful to have gotten to be part of. In just a snapshot, I love watching that. All of the moments with those guys, their families, everyone shirtless. Like, when did that become <laughs> a thing? You know? Know, I'm so old school, Kristen <laughs> and David. You know, there's no shirts, there are belts. It was hot, we, we right? Yeah, none I of that. Mean, Let's not kid ourselves, Steve. Neither one of us look good without our shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're not going shirtless. <laughs> That's fair. Thank you so much for taking the Thank time. You. We're going to let you get back Thanks, out there man. and watch appreciate your guys. Cavaliers much. General Manager David Griffin, thank you again for joining Thanks, us. Kristen. We appreciate it. Thank you.